and uh, I'm not going to let anybody stand in my way. Well, it didn't quite work out that way. Looking back, remember that Bobak had a tough, bloody semifinal against the Soviet heavyweight. Then, just two days later, came his chance for the gold medal against Cuba's Teofio Stevenson. Dwayne had beaten him the previous year in the Pan American Games, but at Munich, Stevenson got his revenge with a thunderous right hand. Bobak turned pro and ran off an amazing streak. 38 consecutive wins in four years. He was promoted as the Great White Hope and matched against the number one challenger, Ken Norton, in Madison Square Garden. What resulted was not just a defeat, but a humiliation for Bobak. Norton knocked him out in 58 seconds of the first round. Nine months later, he traveled to Johannesburg for a bout with a South African policeman, Kali Kanotsa, unknown at the time in this country. Kanotsa clubbed him out in the third round. Since then, Bobbing has changed management and started to come back with eight straight knockout victories. He credits a new training program, totally unique to boxing. It calls for grueling workouts, intensive physiotherapy, and 40 miles of road work a week. Double the mileage of Dwayne's old program. After only eight months, the effect on his physique is startling. Gone down from 226 pounds down to about 210, 212, and uh, in the process of losing all this weight, and I've added on approximately 31 pounds of muscle in the changeover because my body fat has dropped from 22% down to about 14%. And I've added on about two inches to my neck, uh, dropped a couple inches off of my waist, uh, my spare tire. <laughs> and uh, added an inch or two to my calf and my thighs. And uh, the whole program in itself has just basically made me much stronger, much quicker, and uh, much, you know, I'm a much better conditioned athlete. What we're doing is not a... Uh, a guy who's uh, a young pro on the scene, he's only had 17 fights. Uh, it's pretty much pushes me back a couple years again, and I don't have a couple years to, to waste right now. I'm 28. I'm in the prime of my career. I have uh, three or four, maybe five, even five years of right in front of me, but I can't afford to lose two years. Uh, the Tate fight definitely is very crucial, and, you know, I'm ready for this like I've been ready for no other fight. Dwayne Bobbitt trained in California, avoiding the severe Indiana winter weather. He's guided by one of the best organized camps I've ever seen, managed by an ex-sports writer from New York, Dave Wolf. But the big question still unanswered, has he learned to defense a thundering right hand? Can he take a punch? on the scene right now, but watch out because Dwayne Bobbick is back and he's going to stay back. And maybe it's his last chance. And there is 28-year-old Dwayne Bobbitt, very confident there's a result of eight straight knockout victories. Very much at home here in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is his fourth bout in the city. And John Tate fighting here for the first time. He's been brought along very fast. In a little over a year, he left Madison City, Arkansas, went to Knoxville, Tennessee, and represented the United States on the Olympic team where he was a bronze medalist. And like Bobbitt, was stopped by Teofio Stevenson. The referee is George DeFabus giving him these rules briefly. The 10-point must scoring system is in effect here in Indiana. There is a mandatory eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. In other words, three knockdowns in a single round and it's over. You cannot be saved by the bell except, of course, at the end of the 10th round. The referee and the two judges do the scoring. The referee is uh, experienced and very good, George DeFamous of Indianapolis. And the judges are Joe Segrew and Tom Catterson. All right, Dwayne Bobbick in the red trunks on the left. 
uh, is 6'3". His opponent, 24 years old, is 6'4", and weighs 22 pounds more. Now, he's an upright fighter, John Tate. He likes to throw punches with both hands. Bobby, as you saw in our up close and personal, is vulnerable to a hard right hand, especially preceded by a left hook to the body. So this is what he, I hope, has learned in order to stay long with young John Tate. This is round one if you just joined us. And Tate has really opened up, and Bobby has felt the punches already. Bobby who does cut. Often we are early in the first round. The way Bobby is a very slow starter, and this has been a problem. He has a he has a total of 16 second round. He's in trouble right now. He may go down. This is the first round. Tate is landing everything. Shades of Kenny Norton. Remember Norton did it in 58 seconds, and now Tate is trying to get through the heavy punch. He also could be wearing himself out. But Bobby is catching the ball now. And down on one knee, and George DeFavis, the referee. Here's a man mandatory eight count. Here in this round. We have about a minute and a half, and Bobby now legitimately goes down. Bobby gets severe trouble. And unfortunately, look at the time left. A little less than a minute and 20. He looks to his corner what to do. They can't help. It's up to the 28-year-old heavyweight hopeful. Trying to get through the heavy punch. 
The Ulster will be wearing himself out. The public is pitching the ball now. And down on one knee and George DeFate is the referee. Here's the man. Dwayne Bobby, what a pity. 
This is a heavyweight that has scored himself 42 knockouts. Great. Now Great. he's been knocked out three times in 51 fights at around the 2 minute and 16 second mark of round one. Knocked down twice. The referee, George DeFavis, steps in and ends it. And John Tate, the 24-year-old who has handled Don Marshall and Judge Hill and his manager, Ace Miller, all the folks from Knoxville, Tennessee, are beside themselves. Let's go back and, in slow motion, look at the punishment by the 24-year-old. A right-hand lead, another right-hand lead, and that always indicates that an opponent is in trouble. Four successive right-hand leads, unheard of in boxing. We told you, take...